Hello, welcome back to another Prompt Muse video. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to get your AI character, which you might have created in Mid Journey, Stable Diffusion, or any text to image generator, and take this character and make them into a game ready character that you can control the facial expressions using just an iPhone. Hopefully, in this video, I'm introducing you guys to technology or software you do not know exists. And when you've Watch the entire video you'll know a few pieces of cool software that are absolutely free that you can go and download now and start tinkering with i have a written format of this tutorial on the promptmuse.com website because sometimes it's easier to look at that for references than scrubbing through a video before we start the tutorial i've just put together a quick visual representation of the tutorial before we go ahead into it and also this will show you the software that you will need to install. I'm using my redhead.ckpt model to create the consistent images of my character. If you do not have a trained model, you can use this tutorial up here to train your own, or you can use my one for free, which is down in the description. We're then going to take those images into Blender and use a plugin called Face Builder, which turns images into 3D mesh with correct topology as well as automatically unwrap texture map of those images from Stable Diffusion. Then going to be turning that mesh into a meta human character and then using it in Unreal Engine. I'll also be showing you the app we'll be using to control our character by just using our facial movements. Because I'm using a plugin that when you use reference images, it actually snaps the mesh to the reference images, which is really cool, which means I don't actually have to do any 3D modeling at all, but I do need consistent headshots of this character. So I need a front headshot, a side headshot, and a perspective headshot, which is quite hard to do with prompting. What I did was take a photo of myself on the trusty iPad. I then just took the background out with holding down and clicking on it. That's a new Apple feature and it removes the background for you automatically. I then just sent those files to myself via email or Google Drive or whatever and got them on my computer and then went to the image to image tab over here and then uploaded my photo one by one in the image to image tab. I then wrote in my prompt that I wanted a beautiful ZWX person. So beautiful usually gives me a symmetrical face, which I want, and I want her to be in a photo shoot. So I want the lighting to be diffused. I then also said I wanted her hair up because I wanted up out of her face. Down in the negatives, I made sure that her mouth was closed. But I don't want any teeth showing in the image because I'm going to be using this as a UVW texture on my 3D character and yet yeah, the teeth are going to be 3D modelled anyway. So then I set my sampling to 100, used Eula A, my input was 512 by 512 so my output is 512 by 512. I then set my CFG scale to around about 19 so it's adhering to the prompt and then my denoising strength to about 0 0.5 to 0 0.6 and this means if you set it to zero the photo of me the input file would not change at all so putting it about to 0 0.6 means it looks more or less like my character i don't want it to look like me whatsoever i'm using my face just so it can reference my pose and my facial position i then created a seed on the first run and if I like that seed, I then hit the reuse button over here and use that seed for all my other images, which created the consistency. So this took about 10 minutes all in all to create several headshots. And that's it. We have finished in Stable Diffusion and we can now crack on with the modeling phase. And to model this character, I'm going to be using Blender. The download link is in my description. And as I say, it's free for you to use. So let's head over to Blender. So now we're gonna take those reference images and turn them into a head mesh. And to do this, I'm using a plugin called Face Builder. It's not free, but you can download a free trial to try it out for yourself. Once that's downloaded, we just want to clear up our scene by selecting and deleting any elements that are there and head over to this small arrow on the right-hand side of your screen. If you click that, you'll come down and you should see a face 
builder tab here give that a click and we want to create our new head model click you can see that's a pretty generic male head model which is no good for our project so we're going to get our images in and turn that into our character so to do this come down to views and then click on add images navigate to the images that you just created from stable diffusion and just select all those images and click on open images and you can see down here we've got all our perspectives here so if you click on the image this is where the magic happens for instance for our front profile image you can see if you click on a line face the neural networks of the AI work out where the face is according to the mesh and creates you a 3D model of those images. This is pretty cool, but we're gonna to have to use every single profile just to make sure it fits to our character. Another thing, this doesn't work perfectly. So you might have to go in, for instance, and left click to place a pin and then pull the mesh into position where you want it. So you can do this in absolutely every viewport and it's important just to get those very small details correct. If you find you've placed a pin in the wrong place, you simply right click on the pin and that deletes it. To come out of that profile view, just press escape on your keyboard and you can now see our male head mesh has transformed into a female head shape. And that's from one perspective. So we're just going to go into another perspective and I'm going to repeat that process again. We're going to click on the align face button and that will snap our mesh to our reference image do not add too many pins but make sure that the detail and refinement is there so i'm just going to go through that very quickly and go through and pin all the points that i want to for my character so once you're happy with your mesh just come out and we are now going to create the texture to add the uvw texture to this character just come to the textures panel and you can set the resolution here i'm doing 4096 pixels by 4096 so that's quite a big Big UVW map and I'm going to be using the UV map butterfly so that's going to flatten the face which makes it easier later on to come in and add details in Photoshop. I'm going to simply click on create texture and I'm just going to take the images from the front profile and both of the side profiles. The reason why I don't take it from the perspective is because of overlap issues within the texture. So these three profiles are gonna be absolutely fine to create the texture from. So we now have a texture map for our character. Now you'll probably see here, there's a few black spaces and this is where we haven't got the perspective for that view. That does not matter because we're gonna be taking this character into something called a metahuman and we're going to be using their skin textures and then combining this later on. So now we just want to export that texture as a PNG because we're going to be using that later. So find the export button under textures, give that a click and I'm just going to save mine on my desktop here so you can see it there. We also want to save the mesh because we're going to be turning that into our metahuman. So just go up to file and to export and dot fbx and then just give it a name and over where it says path I'm just going to select that to copy and then where there's a little image to the right of it with a box just give that a click and you'll see that the texture is now copied into that file we then go to export fbx and again just save that anywhere we are now done in blender and we are going to move into unreal engine so see you in a second open up your epic games launcher you're going to need to make an epic games account as well again absolutely free once you have launched the launcher go to launch so this is where all your unreal projects live and we're going to set up a blank document and to do this if you go to film video and live events from the left hand panel and then click on blank you then want to give your project a name i've actually switched off starter content and ray tracing because that will speed the load times up i'm gonna click on create so this is what your screen will look like when you've loaded up your first unreal project and what we want to do is install some metahuman plugins so if you go over to settings over here and click that and come down to plugins and and then from here you have a search bar and we're just simply going to type in metahuman 
you will then see the MetaHuman new experimental plugin. We just want to check the box and then we will get a message saying, do you want to install this? And yes, we do. You will then have to restart your project. And if you click on restart now, that will do everything for you and restart without you having to touch anything, which is fantastic. And that will open up our project with our plugin now installed. So the project opens again with our plugin folder, which we now want to close down. If you come over to the bottom left hand corner of your screen, you'll see something called content draw. So this is where all our files internal of our project will live. So this is where we want to import our mesh that we just created in Blender. Come over to your content draw and anywhere in this blank space, right click and go up this pop-up menu to import to game. Just navigate to where you saved that .fbx that we just exported out to Blender and click on open. You will now be presented with these import options. You don't actually have to do anything here. So just click import all and that will import your mesh. If you get any errors, do not worry, just press clear and move on. So now you can see the elements from our FBX file have successfully loaded in. We need to make a MetaHuman identity server. And to do this, right click anywhere on the content drawer where there's a space and come up here until you see MetaHuman. So if you installed that plugin correctly, you will have this and then come across from MetaHuman and you want to select MetaHuman identity and you want to give this MetaHuman identity a name. This name is going to be the name of your MetaHuman. So I'm going to call her red head tut one. So once you've named that file, we will then want to double left click on that file. This is our meta human identity solver. This is where it's going to create the blend shapes for our animations automatically. What we want to do is come up to components from mesh and click on that drop down, and we can see our mesh here. So yours will be named differently to mine, but just click on that mesh and it will be loaded in. You want to position the screen so we're looking face onto the character. Now, this can be quite tricky with the controls. You're going to have to use a combination of the middle mouse button and the right mouse button to get her in view. We then want to come over and just make sure neutral pose is selected. So the next thing we want to do, now this has become available, click on promote frame. We also want to right click on this frame zero down here and click on lock camera. So it just ensures that we don't move our position. Now the next step is to click on track active frame. And this is going to pinpoint all those positions of the eyelids, mouse, etc. Now you can see our trackers have now been placed on our face. If they're not in the correct place, you can move them, but that looks good to me. You can look at each elevation of the face and make sure those are okay. I'm now going to go to the penultimate step, which is the meta human identity solve and click on that. So now that is done, we want to come over to body. So just come down here and select a body that's most suitable for your human. Once you've selected the body, come up to mesh to meta human, and that's going to transfer this model to our meta human creator. It might ask at this point to sign in, so do that. So you will now get a message saying your meta human is now available in the creator and bridge. So we just click OK and we don't need this project anymore. So if you come out of there and then go to window and then come down and to Quixel Bridge. Your Quixel Bridge has loaded up. Come to the left hand side panel and underneath MetaHuman presets, you want to click on my MetaHumans. This will load up all the MetaHumans that you have created. So this is where the identity solver that we've just completed has exported our model to. So we're just going to click on that and it will open up an additional option here. And we want to load it into the MetaHuman creator by clicking that blue button. Alternatively, you can access your MetaHumans by going into this browser address and it will take you to the same place. Once the MetaHuman creator has loaded up, you might see it a bit laggy or slow. This is solely dependent on your internet connection and how many people are hitting their servers. Also, one thing to note, you only get an hour each time creating this. And I think they've done this to limit how many people are on their servers. If I click on this tile here, this 
is the character that we've just saved from Unreal Engine using the meta identity. So if we click on the character and then click on edit selected, I'm going to click stop on the idle animation because that will just slow everything down. We want to add some makeup, skin and hair and make her look all fancy. First thing we need to do is go to custom mesh up here. You can give an influence over the mesh, how much you want it to be generic meta human or how much you want it to be like your mesh. I can see I've got an error here with my lip. It's not symmetrical and it's sort of curled up. So we're going to go in and fix that. And I'm going to select the mouth section here. And down here, we've got region influence. So it's just going to influence that tiny bit and not the area around the mouth because that is true to my character. So I'm going to bring the region of influence down. And you can see that has fixed my Error. Once you have finished, you need to click on enabling editing. If we click on duplicate and unlock, this will save a character before you've locked it in. Um, so you can come back and edit this if you need to. So if you come down to skin, we can now assign her a skin color and we can go into all these options, makeup, teeth. Now, just a point here, this is very limited to what you can do, the styles that you've got. If you've got particular freckles or moles or makeup on your character and you can't do it within this, do not worry because we have got that UVW map still that we can apply to our character in Unreal Engine. In the Meta Human Creator, you can sculpt your character and refine their features further. If you see this floating panel up here, this is your sculpting panel. If you click the middle arrow icon, you simply just click on one of the dots with the left mouth button and drag and you can see you can change the look of your character. This is fairly limited so it's best to get the base mesh as close as you can to your character before you bring it into MetaHuman but if there's something that you can clearly see that you need to fix you can come in from any perspective and refine your 3D character further. So I just sped up the process of me adding hair and eyebrows because it's so simple you don't actually need a tutorial on how to do that. A program that you may find helpful that is absolutely free is called Pure Ref and it allows you to bring in your reference images and drag them over the top of your character. With Pure Ref you can then overlay your reference image over the top of your meta human and then you can right click and go to mode and put transparent over mouse and that means that you can now lock it in and then go into sculpt mode and then change the points to exactly where they are on your reference image so you might find that useful links to that program and, and again it's absolutely free is in my description below so we have finally finished all the modeling that we need to do to our meta human so now we need to bring her into unreal engine and you could start a brand new project and drop her in there but the lighting is not going to be very good and I suppose you probably want your meta human to look good. To do that, you can just download a project that's already created with preset lighting. Just open up your Epic Games launcher and at the top, you should see Marketplace. If you click on Marketplace and in the search products, just type in meta human, caps, why not? And then you'll see a meta humans lighting and you click on that and you can just download that. So what this is, is a bundle of meta human creator lighting presets. So this plugin was created by the award winning cinematographer Craig Fraser. So they have gifted us these presets for absolutely free, which is very cool. Once that has downloaded, launch your Unreal Engine and you'll see it in your project file. So once you've launched Unreal Engine, you'll see that meta human lighting preset there. So we're just going to open that. When you open up your project or your lighting preset, the first preset will look like this. And to access all the additional presets, just go down into your content drawer. Remember, this is where all your assets are contained. And if you look down, you've got all contents and then within a maps, you've got all the different lighting presets here. So I'm going to go for the lighting preset moonlight and that gives like a nice, dark, mysterious moonlight lighting setup. Now, all we are missing is our 
meta human all we need to do is go up to the top horizontal toolbar and click on windows and then come down and we're using that quixel bridge again and from the left hand menu click on meta humans and then underneath meta human presets you'll see my meta humans this is my redhead youtube tut character here and if we click on her little slate here you can see that we have an additional options here to the right of the screen we can change the resolution of the character we want to download so if your computer is not particularly fast you might want to look at medium quality or low quality if you ever want to go back you can either do that through your browser or start it up from here and that will take you to the same place through the browser and then you can edit her further and it will automatically save back into here so the full circle is done to get this character into unreal engine now we need to download her onto our pc so you can either click the big green download button here or you can see this little arrow on her tile and click that and that will start the download process this takes about an hour for me my internet connection is so bad and my computer is not the fastest so there we go so she's going to download now once this character has finished downloading locally to your machine you'll get a blue arrow up here if you just click that it will then import that into your scene so once that's finished importing if you come back down to your content drawer remember that's where we keep all our files and then go from content and then to metahumans expand that and you should be able to see your character there so open up her folder you'll see your character there in a 3d preview simply hold down and drag your character onto the scene you can place your character anywhere what you need to do is just make sure your character is selected and come over to her details option here and right at the top you've got transform so you just need to put zero 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 and bam she's magically in the middle of your scene once you've got your character in we're going to go up to this movie board here click on that and add level sequence i'm going to give that level sequence a name i'm just going to keep mine actually as new level sequence and click save and then you get this little sequencer bar down here this is like your animation timeline but what we want to do is just create a camera so click on that camera icon and that will create a camera for your character we can just move this camera around so we can see our character in view from here you can actually control your camera and zoom in and zoom out i'm going to zoom in quite a bit there you can then play around with the camera settings just to get the details you want so this is something i like to do especially if your character is out of focus i go over here in the details panel for the camera and find focus settings and in focus settings come down to see the draw debug focus it's just on top of that purple thing and check that box there and then above it manual focus distance just go back and forth until you see this uh, purple plane this purple plane helps you set the focal depth so once you're happy with that and it's not so blurry just uncheck that there and there we have our character nicely set up ready for animating so i'm just going to quickly add some texture details to my character to make her look like my original image in the content drawer i'm just going to navigate down to meta humans and then go to my lady me lady which is redhead youtube tutorial and click on that and then it's very simple you've got your face and then you've got all the different face options for this character and the reason why there are so many faces because there's different maps for wrinkles and different expressions so if you're going to change one just ensure that you do all the changes on all these maps here so to get it out of here so you can edit in photoshop just right click on the map and go to asset actions in the menu and click on export i'm just going to do mine in onto the desktop load up photoshop or whatever photo editing suite you actually have so i've just loaded that map in that was on my desktop which is a targa file so now you can draw on this image i'd recommend creating different layers so you can duplicate it and add it to all the other images as you can see she hasn't got eyebrows and i want to fix that because my character actually has quite defined eyebrows 
that I could not get in MetaHuman. We can then use those elements on our character from our Unreal Engine. So if we come here, we can then zoom in and let's steal some bits. So we're going to steal these eyebrows here because they're quite good. I'm just going to take those off that character. I'm just going for speed, not accuracy. To save the Targa file back out, just go up to File. I need to click on Save a Copy and then just save over the top of that file that we pulled out of Unreal Engine. You can just simply drag and drop that target file in and it will update the character image there. So now we are on to the fun bit. We're gonna connect our face using our iPhone and connect it directly to our MetaHuman so we can control our MetaHuman just using our face. So what we need to do first is go into the Apple App Store on our phone and you can see this live link face here. If you search live link face, that will come up and click and install that. Once that is installed, come over to the app and open the app and you should see something like this. To connect this app to our MetaHuman, we need to be on the same IP. So if you go up to the top left hand corner, you will see a cog. If you give that a click, we want to click on the first option which is live link. If you come down to targets, you just want to add a target there. So you're going to need to know your IP address. And if you don't know it, do not worry. To find your IP address, all you need to do is come down to your taskbar where it says search down here on your computer and type in CMD. And this is to open up your command prompt panel. Now you want to type into this IP config and hit return on the keyboard. And now it will display your IP address. So you want to look at IPv4 address if you come here. So now on your iPhone, you just want to copy that IPv4 address into your phone just by typing it in. We'll do nothing technical here. And then once it's all typed in, you want to then click on add and now it has added your IP address and that's pretty much all you need to do. So on the top where it says live, if that is not green, make sure you click on it and turn it to green. Also, we want to recalibrate our face, which means we want the AI to be able to measure our face to make sure that it is set up correctly for our MetaHuman. To do this, you just need to have a neutral, straightforward look on your face and look into the lens of the camera. When you're ready, just click that big red record button and it will count down and take your photo and just click save that has recalibrated your face so now we want to ensure that we have all the correct components or the plugins installed in unreal just to make sure these things all connect together so if you go onto the top right hand corner in unreal uh, you'll see an option that says settings and come down to plugins and then we're just going to type in the search bar apple and please install the Apple AR kit. So you just need to check the checkbox next to it and the Apple AR kit face support. And then once those are checked, we also want to install Live Link. So type in Live Link in the search bar and just make sure that all these plugins here have Just ensure that all these plugins here are installed and you know that because they have a check by them. It might ask you to restart your project down here once you've checked those box which you want to do so please do that. And with all that done we can now just click on our MetaHuman and then come down here and under live link you will now see all your settings so we want to go into the AR kit face subject and under the drop down menu you should if this has all worked correctly, see your iPhone. We want to use the AR kit face, so give that box a check. And then on the Live Link body, um, I add that, and I always say use Live Link body, even though we're not. <laughs> um, and we are now ready to pick up our phone and see if this has worked. As you can see, it seems to work. There's a tiny bit of a lag between the data, but if you're finding that your Wi-Fi connection is too slow, what you can do is buy an 
Apple to Ethernet adapter. These are very, very cheap on Amazon, a couple of pounds, and then buy an Ethernet cable if you don't have one and connect it directly to your computer. I would love to see what you guys create using this tutorial. If you could tag me at Prompt Muse in any and all socials, I would love to see what you guys are creating. And I will be picking a winner out of the lot and putting them on my social media and giving you Amazon vouchers to say a massive thank you for doing this tutorial. Again, thank you so much and that will do it. Bye bye.